Sí, ya. Uh. Okay. Uh. okay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, if I could, I'd take off running around this building. My God. There is victory in this house today. Oh, Jesus. There is victory. I had a hard time putting this, le- this message together. And it's not a shouting message, but it's a message to help us to understand what's happening and what's going on. Even when you, when I tell you, I had a hard time. I walked away from it two, three times. Ooh, I almost thought this morning I ain't doing that. But the Lord said no, because this is what's happening in the body of Christ. This is what's going on. Distractions. He just said distractions. They the focus killers. Distractions come. They the focus killers. And I said, God, haven't I already taught that and preached that? He said, but it's still happening. He said, my children have got to understand that in order to win, we got to maintain focus and not allow the distractions to get us off key. Wednesday, Thursday night, Bishop was talking about faith and the distraction. I said, boy, that's it right there. I said, okay, we on, we on a vein. We, we in line with what the Lord is wanting, is releasing, not wanting, but what the Lord is releasing in this house and in the earth. Distractions. We cannot allow the dis- distractions that the enemy bring to get us off track. Distractions are focus killers. <laughs> focus killers. They will kill your focus and they will get you off track. You can sit down. They will get you off track. If we're not careful because we're too busy paying attention to what's happening on the side of us. <laughs> not in front, but what's happening on the side. See, the enemy knows he can't distract us in the front. Why? Because Jesus, heaven is in my view. That's my focus. Is that your focus? Heaven, that's, 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 that's my ultimate goal. I like going places, but honey, I'm trying to make heaven my home. That's my focus. But he knows in order to get me off of track, to get heaven out of my view, he's got to distract me on the side. So I start and I'm not looking to heaven. So today, whoo, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I think now I can just kind of talk it out to you and we gon' cause we, we see, see, we shout enough. We, we, we get that, but we've got to have some tools to fight the enemy with. Cause the devil can come in and shout with you. Probably out dance a lot of us. <laughs> Why? Cause we get tired <laughs> and we just like, whoo, let me stop. But it's when we get the tool, how to fight and how to work, that's when he can't defeat us. Because it's like, oh, I know this is working. (laughs) I know if I, as long as I keep movement, as long as I keep working my tool, that I'm going to get what I'm looking for. Amen? You know, I'm just practical. Those of you may be listening for the first time, I'm just practical. Sometimes getting victory is like trying to get your ice cream out of the bucket and it's hard and you 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 scratch and all you get is a little bit and you you're trying to get the edge and you're trying to scoop but you know the good stuff is down in the middle but you can't get in the middle because it's too hard but if you keep digging When, when you keep digging and you keep and you go back okay well that too didn't work let me get the the real ice cream scooper let me get the one that I know is going to work. See, sometimes we are, we're using tools and we're using methods that's not really working. It's just, it's just kind of scraping the surface. But when we really want to get to where God would have us to go, we got to get the right tool. We got to use the right thing that's going to work to get us the, the results that we're looking for. 
Because see, if we keep using the wrong thing, it's going to get us off focus. It becomes a distraction. And what do you say? Oh, I don't want it. Forget it. It's too hard. I did it. I was trying to get ice cream one day. I said, oh, I can't do this. Bishop, can you come get this ice cream for me? And see, we depend on somebody else to do our job. We won't read, we won't study, we won't pray, we won't come to church, we won't, we won't, we waiting for somebody else to do it for us. But check this out. Then when you let somebody else do it for you, they don't do it the way you need it done. I know, I know. Because then when I asked my daughter to give me some ice cream, she came back with a bowl. I'm like, well, who are you trying to give all this ice cream to? She gave me too much. It wasn't in my lane. She wasn't running my race, so she didn't know what I could take. Oh, I'm talking to somebody because, see, you're depending on somebody else to do the job for you. And when they don't do it the way you want it done, you walk away saying, well, they didn't give me what I wanted. Oh, I'm talking about distractions and focus killers. Because, see, when we don't do what we're supposed to do, it becomes a distraction. We, we start looking in other areas to get done what we need done. We want to satisfy it some other way. But look at somebody and say, you got to do the work. So we're going to talk today about distractions, which are the focus killers. I just want to share it. I'm really just, I really want to talk. I wanted to get my little stool and sit down because I wanted to just mama talk today. And, and because we, we need to know we in this 10th day, uh, the 10th day of this new year. And there's already stuff happening. Already things falling apart and loved ones have passed away and people that have been prominent in the body of Christ, they are, they, they died and, and it's like, well, Lord, I just don't understand what happened. Why? Why that one? Why this one? And there are things happening in our personal life that we don't understand. Some of us, truth be told, we feel like we're still in 2020, like we, 2020 just crossed over. Come on, we looking, ain't nothing changed, ain't nothing happening. What's going on? I just don't get it. They said, you know, crossing over to a new year, things are going to change. And Lord, I look to you for things to change. And God, I decreed and declared that it was going to be my year. But it still looked the same. Distractions. That, that's just a distraction. <laughs> Come on, okay. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. And so I'm just talking, I really am, I really, I'm really 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 am gonna just talk proverbs chapter 4 verse start with verse 25 and i'm gonna read this from the king james version and i want us to really see what the lord is saying unto us from proverbs chapter 4 verse 25 you dare say praise jesus all right hallelujah praise jesus they're coming in amen and it reads let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Distraction killers. Distractions which are focus killers. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So here the scripture is talking about our, our walk, the direction that we're going and what it is that we're doing. Many of us, you know, a few years back, you know, the vision board was the big thing, and I think it still is, and we, oh, I gotta get my vision board, because I gotta see where I'm going this year, and I gotta declare, put it before me, and then I know where I'm going, and I know what I'm going towards. This is my vision. This is what I'm going to do. And this is what the scripture is saying. It's talking about our vision, what it is that we are looking at, so we will know the, the, the direction that we are going in. But in that, distractions will come. 
We can have a vision board, but if we're not careful, even with a vision board, we will still encounter distractions. We will stop looking at the vision board and start looking at what's happening around us. The distraction, a distraction are to are distractions is the act of distracting. So there's things that comes to distract us from what we're doing. It is the state of being distracted. And it, we, when we say distraction, it is that which distracts, divides the attention or prevents consecra consecration, concentration. Yeah, trying to get it all right. I'm excited. So the d distractions come to hinder, to come against what we are concentrated on. In other words, it, it, it messes with what we're looking at. <laughs> to distract now means to draw away or divert as the mind or attention. And really the distraction is really all about our mind and our attention. And the enemy knows that because he all, all his job is, is I just got to get their mind off of God. I have to get their attention off of God. You've heard me say it many times before. It's not about your house. It's not about your car. It's not about your money, your job, your clothes, your friends and family. It's not it, what, when he uses those things to distract us from God. Cause you know how it is when they start talking crazy on the job. We don't really pray. We start, well, girl, what you think? Well, man, what you think gonna happen? Oh, Lord, I gotta find me another job. Oh, they talking about this and they talking about that. Oh, I gotta do something else. We're not focused on God. <laughs> the, 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 the economy starts getting, oh, oh, well, they talking about that stimulus check. Let's, let's talk about that. We, we was praying, Lord. I need a miracle. Lord, send the finances. And when they start talking about sending the money or when they was talking about not sending it, we got our mind off. They need to send, loose my money. That's loose my money. Send my money. And then when we got it, did we, no, you ain't got to an answer. Did we give God, first of all, his 10% off of the top? Or did we figure out, ooh, child, I'm going to the store. Let me see what can I spend. Let me see what can I buy. I'm going to buy me this. I'm going to buy me that. I'm going to buy this, that, and the 23rd other thing. Come on, somebody. Them $600 took our little attention off of God. We was praying, Lord, I need you to bless me. Lord, I need you to work it out. And then when we got it, we said, thank you, Lord, and went to the store. We, we were not focused on God. We stopped praying. We, we, we not praying now. Well, somebody, because now they want the $2,000 check. Lord, touch them, Lord. They got the house, Lord. We can only get that money now. That's a distraction. I'll say it. They are distracting us from what's really going on. This stuff that we see out here in the, in the, in the, in the political area, in, in Washington and all over and everywhere else, that's a distraction from what's really taking place. And we, we the church, we need to be careful. They're giving us minnows, but the shark is coming. We better be careful. Okay. See, they're getting our attention off of what they're doing. And they're giving us something to keep us pacified and satisfied over here. So when they really drop the ball, we looking like, what in the world? Well, they, yeah, they, they, they set us up, basically. And see, that's what the enemy does. He will set us up. Because he'll make us think that we're okay. It's okay for you to go over here. But he's really setting a trap for us that when we turn, the next thing we know, we done fell in the trap. Distractions are a trap. Distractions are a trap. 
They are to trap us and to ensnare us into the hand of the enemy. But if we keep our eyes, if we keep our eyes looking forward, we won't worry about what's to the left or to the right. The scripture says, though they come from the left and the right, it won't come nigh your dwelling. I know I didn't quote it quite right, but, but we understand they're going to fall to the left and they're going to fall to the right. But if I keep my focus, it's not going to happen to me. Because why? Because because God, my steps have been ordered by the Lord. He has already planned a path for each of us in here. Those of us that are listening, he we've already got a path that has been planned. But guess what? It's the enemy's job to distract us, to get us off of the chosen path and get us on the alternative path. Practical like the movie and back to the future in the time continuum that somewhere there was a, 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 a break off that instead of it going the direction it should have gone something happened and in other words there was a, a distraction that came and it screwed it off and it made the the future go to the left so that what should have happened didn't happen, but what should not, because in the movie, I think it's about the third one and the back to the future, the three, third, when they went to the future in the 20th century, when they were flying in the air. But what happened when Biff got the, 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 the book and he should not have gotten it, it caused him to, to, to take on and to get the riches that he should not have gotten. So it messed up the time continuum and, and, and it put in place something that should not have been. And see, this is what, where you going? This is what the enemy wants to do with the children of God, with the body of Christ. He's coming after us. If he said, if I can get their focus off of serving God, I can uh, um, um, disrupt the time continuum and where God wants to take them in their purpose on the path that he has planned. And I'm going to put them on my path. And see, if we get on the path of the enemy, that leads to death and destruction. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, this is what the enemy wants to do. He don't care nothing about us coming to church. He don't care nothing about us shouting. He don't care nothing about us reading scripture, even speaking in tongues. If he can get our focus off and get us so distracted that we get off the chosen path, onto the alternative path that's what he wants because if we he can get us on that alternative path what's the alternative path? doing what he wants us to do following after our flesh the lust of the flesh the lust of, lust of the eyes and the pride of life that's what the enemy wants us to go to he wants us to believe that guess what god is not with us but the devil is a liar focus killers distractions they come to draw our attention away from God you know how it is you sitting in church and you see every movement that everybody makes in church you ain't listening to the preacher you hear your phone buzzing you hear somebody else's phone buzzing you, you're thinking about did I turn the stove off well what are we gonna eat after church where are we gonna go and Lord is it gonna be still cold outside you know I'm ready for the you know I'm hungry, Lord. I wish to hurry up because I show sure him hungry. Distraction. And, and what happens is you miss your word. You miss the direction for what God was telling you. You was waiting on a word, and because you was worried about who was going to the bathroom, you was worried about whose baby was crying, you was worried about, you know, your phone, you was worried about your car, you was, oh, my foot itch, oh, this, oh, that. uh-huh i'm tired of this mask and i can't breathe it's hot it's cold in here i'm just you, those are distractions see the enemy don't want you to understand what he's doing okay so while the preaching is going on about distractions he distracts you Because he don't want you to know that it's him distracting you from hearing and seeing what God has for you. 
<laughs> I told you, I walked away from this message two, three times. I was, I was sitting, I said, Lord, I'm getting distracted trying to write the whole message. I said, I know this must be right. But distractions. The enemy will use many things to distract us. And it's not always the things we see. Distractions for a lot of us come in the form of our past. The enemy will bring up our past to distract us from our future. You know, we used to say, make one step forward and two steps backwards. That's a distraction. Because the enemy don't want us to go forward. He, because he'll bring our past to make us feel disqualified and unworthy to go forward in God. And he knows that if we sit there long enough with it, we're going to go with it. We're going to dwell on it. We're going to reminisce about it. And then we'll come up with all the reasons why it's right. Yeah, that's right. I really can't go for it. I, I really can't do this. And I really can't do that because this, that. And yeah, I don't talk well. And no, I don't remember scriptures well. And people don't understand me. And I don't know how to explain myself really good. So it's hard for me to stand up in front of people. That's a lie. The devil wants you to feel like it's hard for you to stand up in front of people and talk. But that's not the truth. Because you talk to the cashier. You talk to the people on the phone. You talk to your family, you don't have no problems. But then when he tells you to stand up and let's expound on the scripture, oh, I don't remember the word. That's a, that's a, that's a lie. That's what the enemy wants us to believe, that we are not um, smart enough or we don't know enough scriptures. Competent, thank you. We're not competent enough to be able to articulate the scriptures like my pastor does. Well, you shouldn't. Because you're not him. Yeah, because, you know, that used to be one of my things. But I don't preach like Bishop. I don't remember scriptures like Bishop. And, oh, I have a hard time. I wish I could do it like Bishop. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody in the room. I'm talking to somebody listening. We feel like because I can't do it like the next person, then I can't do it. That's a distraction. That's a focus killer. Because why? Now you get your focus off of what it is that God has called you to do. Oh, I'm talking strong in here today. Because 2021, we're going to defeat the devil in here. We're going to defeat some devils. Glory to God. We've been stuck too long with allowing distractions to hold us in bondage. And see, the distraction will hold us in bondage. But we got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep our eyes. Keep them right on. Right on. Right on. Right. What's right? Looking at what's right. <laughs> Straight ahead. So, so Philippians. So we, we, when we pay attention to the distraction, instead of where we, we get off course. Okay, let's go there. We, we, we get off course. But Philippians 3 and 13 and 14 reminds us how we are to stay on course and not allow the distractions that get in our attention to get us from serving the Lord. And what does Philippians 3 and 13 say? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I ain't got there yet. We all striving. Every last one of us in here, we're all running a race. We're all striving to get to where God is calling us to be. But this one thing I do. See, you, we got to remember when the enemy comes, we've got to forgetting those things that are behind. Because if I keep thinking about what I just left, that's a distraction. Because when you are driving a car, if you look in the rearview mirror long enough, you're going to crash. You're going to crash. Why? Because my focus is no longer even. And see, the enemy will fool you to think. You still looking straight? No, you're not. Because you got more tension on behind you where you came from, what you went through, who did what to you and who didn't do what to you. You got more tension on that, and I say tension on purpose, you got more tension on that than you do what's in front of you. Because my rearview mirror, I'm looking up 
and I only see a portion of what's in front of me. I'm not focused on really the straight and narrow. Now I'm looking to see who's behind me and how they're moving and what they're doing. And if I'm not careful, after a while, my whole attention is on, oh, that car back there. Oh, look at that car. And I'm not looking that I'm getting ready to crash. And that's what the enemy comes to do with distractions. He does not want us to see God in front of us, but he wants us to see what's behind. But Philippians said, forget what's behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Distractions come to keep us from going forward. Bottom line. They don't, the enemy don't want us to make progress in the Lord. He wants us to back up. He wants us to sit down. He wants us to be still. Because he know if I'm if they're still, they're not making no grounds. If I'm still, I'm not taking what I have, what I what I know so far as the word of God is concerned and putting it into action. It becomes a mantelpiece. <laughs> okay. But we've got to look forward, reach forward he says reaching i'm looking but i'm reaching i'm pressing but i'm reaching i press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in christ jesus you can't get it being distracted i can't press and be distracted i i can't push and be distracted because why <laughs> Because the strength that I was exerting here, now because my focus is over here, my, my strength and my exertion becomes less because now I'm trying to figure out what to do. And before we realize that I'm no longer even touching forward, I'm, I'm just totally over here. Gosh, distractions, focus killers. You, you can't let the distractions kill your focus in this hour because if we do you know when you drive in your car and you see something over there you look you be like Ooh. And, and instead of going this way you start going that way why because it's how we move when I go to the left my hands go to the right I veer off course and if we're not careful, when we look, we, we, we lean in, in the wrong direction. <laughs> we're, we're headed for a crash. We're headed for a fall. You know, it's, it's what people say when they overcorrect. And see, if we're not careful, we are overcorrect, thinking, oh, I got to do this, 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 and this. And when you overcorrect, you still going to crash. Why? Because your focus is not on where you're trying to get to. Oh, I'm talking about focus killers today. I'm talking about these distractions. We got to get rid of the distractions. Right, well, I'm sorry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You got to not pay attention to the distractions because we can't get rid of them. We, we can't get rid of them because they, they're there. They, they're going to show up. That's their job. That, that's the enemy's job. That's his job to come and dis distract us. So we can't say, oh, well, all my distractions are gone. No. That would be like riding down a highway in the middle of the desert and you see nothing. Guess what? You're still distracted. Because you're still trying to see, well, ain't nothing out here. You, you riding, Lord, Lord, where we at? Ain't nothing out here. I don't see nothing. As far as I can see, I don't see nothing. You distracted. You done got your eyes off of the road. So, <laughs> I'm about finished. I'm, I'm going to hasten on. I'm, so, so, what do we have to do? The word, the scripture today tells us, first of all, is to let thine eyes look on. So, the first thing we've got to do is fix our gaze on what's before us. We have to fix our gaze on what's before us. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, not the problem, but the promise. Too many times we focus on the problem and not the promise. The problem is there. But what does the promise say? Can you see the promise? Can you capture? Can you focus on the promise? Can you focus on what the Lord said? And I know that our flesh would tell us, well, those are just words. They don't mean nothing. No. 
Words are powerful. Words have meaning. And we have to fix our gaze on the promise. What are you looking at? Ask yourself, what am I looking at? Really, what, what is my focus at? What, what, what's my goal? What is it that I'm trying to accomplish? What is it that I'm trying to do? We read the vision statement every Sunday. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm coming. Are we focusing on that? Are focusing on the lack of people in, sitting in the building? Are we focusing on being a resource for the church, community, and the world? Are we really looking at teaching laity, building them up so that laity can get the job done? Or are we all just waiting on bishop and evangelists? Oh, Jesus. Where's your gaze at? What you looking at? What you looking at? Ask your neighbor, what you looking at? What you looking at? In your personal life, what are you looking at? Have you given more power to the problem? then you have the promise? Have you give more focus on what's wrong as opposed to what the Lord said is right and what he said he's going to do and what he said he's bringing us into? Is that what we're looking at? We're looking at how much we don't have in our bank account and how many bills we got stacked up? And we're not looking at the fact that the Lord said the cattle upon a thousand hills is mine? He said, if you're hungry, I wouldn't tell nobody why, because you got enough to feed me with. Where's the promise at? What, what are we looking at? Come on, somebody. I mean, this, and see, this is what the enemy doesn't want us to understand. That God has promised us in his word, in the word, he has promised us things. But if we don't grasp that, if we allow the distraction of what's wrong, we will never see and take hold to what God said is right. And guess what? We will never possess it. Because he told the children of Israel, you got to go in and possess the land. They saw it. I see it. But in order to get it, I got to go in and possess it. So, so they had to make preparations. They had First they had to fix their eyes on what it was they were going to. And then they had to make preparations for what they were going to get. And then they had to go get it. You, in order for us to be um, ready to receive what God has for us, we have to be prepared for it. But if I'm constantly allowing myself to be distracted, I and I'm not looking at what he has promised me and making preparations, when it comes, I won't get it. I'm going to miss it. You have to be in alignment with God so when the blessing flow, it just flows right on you. Even though it may chase you down, but guess what? You're in alignment. Some of us want to get out of line and we want it to flow, but it ain't gonna, it ain't flowing to the left, honey. <laughs> he said, keep your eyes right and before straight ahead. He didn't say to the left. He didn't say to the right. He said straight ahead. That's where the blessing is. That's where the alignment is. I'm in line with God. I'm in relationship with God. I have aligned myself with the word of God and the promises of God so that when he releases, when the, oh, thank, thank you, Lord. When the window of heaven is open, I am not to the left of the window. I'm not to the right of the window, but I'm right up under the window. I'm aligned with the window. Cause see, if you you to the right, you might not you ain't gonna get it all. You might get a drip drop on your shoulder. If you to the left, you are gonna get a drip drop on the left. But when I'm aligned, that's when the blessings overtake me. That's overtaking when I'm in alignment. It overtakes me, not from the side. It overflows me. God. Lord, have mercy. I couldn't run. I couldn't run. I couldn't run. Get in a line. Tell somebody, get in alignment. Get in alignment. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Get in a line. 
When, when we're out of line, you're not looking to the hill. You you look into the mohill. You you look into the valley. We but but when I'm even if I'm in the valley, I'm gonna look to the hills. I'm gonna look to the mountain because that's where my help is coming from. And, and if I keep looking to the mountains, I'm not looking at what's down in the valley. I'm not looking at everything that's around me trying to pull me in. But because I've got my focus and my gaze on the Lord, I'm not looking at all of this. And He said He would make my feet like Hans feet. If I keep my eyes on Him, He's gonna show me how to step. He's gonna show me how to move. He's gonna show me the direction to take. But if I get my eyes off of Him like Peter did, if I begin to look at what's going on the distractions around me I'm gonna sing but long as Peter kept his gaze on Jesus he walked on water my God he did the impossible come on how you walking on water cuz I'm looking at Jesus I'm not looking at the storm that's around me, but I'm looking at my heavenly father. And long as I keep my eyes on him, no matter what the enemy does, he not going to let me fall. He not going to let me go down. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Because the rest of that Psalm 121 said he won't suffer my foot to be moved. He going to keep me. He ain't sleep. The Lord ain't sleep. He know what's going on. He see what's happening. I told you we just see a preview trailer of it. But he already know the end. Because he spoke my end from the beginning. He said cross over the victory side. But Lord it's storm. Cross over the victory side. We going to the other side. But Lord there's a storm there. Lord you don't see. I see you in the red. I see your bank account is zero. But I'm going to make you a multi-millionaire. But Lord I ain't got a good checking account. I don't even know how to keep good records but go ahead I'm gonna make you a multi-millionaire I'm gonna bring you into this quit looking at what you see and see what God say he ain't sleep if he said he gonna do it he gonna do it that's the kind of God we serve he just need us to stay focused that when the storm come help let me help you out when the storm come guess what you can't you you can't say what your flesh fear oh lord we're gonna get swallowed oh lord the tree gonna fall on my house oh god i'm gonna lose all my stuff oh god i don't know what i'm gonna do where am i gonna go no when the tree when the storm comes say lord because you in my boat i got peace and though the storm rage i still got victory and just in case it break up, I'm going to still make it on broken pieces because I'm going to hold on to a piece of the ship. I just have a whole other revelation of that one, but I'm going to leave that where it's at. And, 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 and so because you said we were going to the other side, then, okay, let's go on to the other side then. Because you said you were going to bless me. Oh, come on, check it out. You said you were going to bless me with a brand new home. Well, guess what? The one you're in, might, something might have to happen to that one for you to get the new home. I'm sorry. I know we don't we don't talk doom and gloom and, and we don't you know we don't tell the people, well Lord, that's gonna happen. No, but just you know, just just in case. It it, it it might happen. See, see, when we when we submit ourselves to the will of God, we don't know how the Lord is going to bless us. We don't know how the blessing is going to come. Come on. He said, I will bring you into fine pastures and I will give you vineyards that you didn't grow. But he didn't say how you was going to get it. He didn't. He didn't say you might have to be homeless for a moment. He didn't say you might have to live with mom and dad for a moment. He didn't say your bank account wouldn't have to be in the red for a moment. He just said, this is where I'm going to take you to. So that when you get there, you're going to know, oh my God, that's what I, I went through that to get this. Oh yeah, God. Who, and you know, then I tell, who, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Girl, I wouldn't take nothing from a journey. Wait a minute, hold it. Six years ago, you was crying. You was ready to leave the Lord. Now you're saying I won't take nothing from a journey. Hold on. Don't, don't be bipolar now. Don't, don't flip and switch now. Come on. Why you in it? You got to give God thanks. He said in everything, give thanks unto the Lord. 
When your bank account, you ain't got but 10 cents. It's barely keeping the account open. You got to tell the Lord, thank you. You got to pick up the mantra and the saying that our bishop says, I'll never be broke another day in my life. And you might have 10 cents. You ain't broke. You might not came by the 25 cent gumball out of the gumball machine, but you got 10 cents to your name. I'm just saying. You got to learn how to make lemonade with the lemons that you get. See, too often times the body of Christ, we fall apart when we don't think we don't have things that we think we should have. That's a distraction because now I'm not looking to God who's the author and finisher of my faith. I'm not looking to God to do the impossible for me. Now I go trying to figure it out myself. But when I get in impossible situations, I be like, okay, God, what you finna do? Because I can't do this. This this out of my league. This this out of my payment. I don't even see it, God. I don't. I, I, in my flesh, I can't even come up with no way how this gonna work. What you gonna do? I don't even have a plan. So God, obviously, you up to something. So since you up to something, I'm gonna praise you in advance before the something that you're doing comes to manifestation. Come on, tell somebody, thank you, Jesus. So we gotta look to the Lord. He ain't sleep. He know exactly what's going on. Hallelujah. Well, from our scripture, and I'm going to my seat, it says, and I want to share this out of the Amplified, Proverbs 4 and 25, it said, let your eyes look on with the fixed purpose. When we begin to look to God, we got to have a fixed purpose. What is your purpose? What is your goal? Where is it that you are trying to go to? And let your gaze be straight before you. You got to consider the pathway that you're taking. You got to consider the direction that you're going. What direction are you going in? Are you going in the Lord's direction? Or are you going in the direction of your flesh? Which way are you going? When the enemy comes against you like a flood, what direction are you going to take? Are you going to move over or are you going to stay right there and let the Lord, hallelujah, build a hedge around you? Are you going to stand there and let the Lord lift up a standard against the enemy? Because see, if we get distracted by the flood, we're going to be overtaken by the flood. But if I stand in the midst of the flood that I see is coming, God, you said you wouldn't put no more on me than I could bear you said you would build a hedge over the enemy when the enemy comes against me you will lift up the standard so God I'm going to stand right here because I'm moving forward and because my motion is forward in you that if I stay here when you put a hedge when you put the standard against the enemy I'm going to be able to walk over whoo, on dry ground because that's what the Lord did for the children of Israel when they were coming against them and the, the sea was before them and Pharaoh was behind them God put a he, he lifted up a standard against the enemy he caused them to walk through what should have drowned them. He caused them to walk through what should have killed them. And this is what the Lord would do when we don't allow the distractions to take our focus. But we keep our focus on the Lord. He said, I'll lift up a standard against the enemy. I'll allow you to walk on through what the devil said. I'm going to kill you with. I'll let you go in into the fiery furnace. I'll let you go in into the lion's den and you know that you're not coming out but because God my focus is on you because my hope is built on Jesus Christ and nothing less God I'm gonna walk I'm gonna walk with you because the Lord is he's my shepherd I shall not I shall not want and God I you gonna lift up, you gonna give me a place, you gonna make a way of my escape to come out of what the enemy wants to kill me with. I'm not gonna let what's on the left and what's on the right to get my focus over what's in front of me. But I'm gonna press, I'm gonna push forward. 
I'm going to stay <laughs> sober. <laughs> I'm going to stay vigilant <laughs> because I know the devil, <laughs> he's my adversary. <laughs> I know he's looking. <laughs> he's checking me out. <laughs> he's watching. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> she ain't prayed this week. <laughs> she ain't fasting this week. <laughs> she been all in her flesh. <laughs> oh, I got her now. <laughs> but when he looks, <laughs> he sees you praying. <laughs> what is he? Is he going to see you fasting? <laughs> is he going to see you in the word? <laughs> because the devil, <laughs> like a roaring lion he's walking about seeking whom he can devour he's looking to see can I swallow you up can I get you off path can I get you off focus can I get your attention off of the Lord can I get them relying on their flesh can I get them relying on what they feel relying on what they think relying on what they got ain't got can I get them to lean to the arm of flesh You got to keep your focus on the Lord. Don't allow the distractions to get you off focus. Don't allow the things that the enemy is whispering in your ear to make you feel like God isn't going to come through. That what God said, that he won't do it. That's a lie. Because what God said, somebody speak to say, if he said it, no, but what but what God said, he gonna do it. And the only way you're gonna know what he said is you gotta get in his word. So drop the if and go to, oh, this is what God said. This is what he said. He said, I'm the head and not the tail. He said, I'm above. And not beneath. He said that I am, I am more than a conqueror. That I'm an overcomer. That I overcome by the blood of the lamb. So since I'm overcoming by the blood of the lamb. I'm going to apply the blood of the lamb. <laughs> My God. See we got. That's our weapon. We got to use that. But the enemy say no. You tell the. And when he. And, and when, the, when, the, when, the, when the devil tell you No. You tell him, no. You just look at him like, no. That's not what the Lord said. <laughs> you, and, you, and you ain't got to get excited. You ain't got to get nervous. You just look and say, no. That ain't what God said. And sometimes you might have to be quiet because he tells us he would uh, put a bridle on our tongue while the enemy, the wicked is before us. Sometimes the enemy just yum, 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 yum. And sometimes you just got to stand there. And you smile because you know what the Lord said. Sometimes you, you can't tell everything. My grandma used to teach me, you can't tell everything. You talk, tell too much, then you get the enemy in your business. Then you limit your blessing. Come on, you can't tell everybody that you just came into an inheritance. I'm talking to somebody. Because you start running your mouth, ooh, ooh, you're not, ooh, ooh, we got, ooh. And the next thing you know, hey, they want to hang out with you. And then they start telling you they dream. Then they start telling you what they lack and what they need. And they know you're a softie. Go on, we just want to sew into you. Quit, quit giving away your blessing. So, some of, some of y'all, you, you're telling too much of your business. Okay, so you you can't we we can't let the enemy know and everything. And see, when I say the enemy, but you saying, but these good people that I'm helping, yeah. But see, the enemy wants to get you to a place of lack. Because if you're not careful, you'll be right back in the same boat where you started from. And you trying to figure out, Lord, where did the money go? You gave it away. Where did your blessing go? You gave it away. And then when your bill come up, they they gone in the wind. You can't even get five dollars. Can I get five dollars? Oh, I ain't got five dollars. I can't give you that. So we got to quit <laughs> telling all our business. Sometimes we can't even tell what the Lord is doing for you. What the Lord has spoken to you in secret, sometimes you got to be quiet with it until it manifests. 
But they good. They don't, they on my side. Huh? You you don't know that. That song you say smiling in your face all the time. Trying to take your place. What they call them? The backstabbers. Oh, come on, somebody. I got a little, I got a little age on me. I got a little age. I got just a little age. And see, that's the enemy. Because all he wants us to do is telling all that's in our heart. Who was that? Um, Samson? Delilah? Yeah, Samson. He told all that was in his heart. And he had been told, hey, don't, don't do that. Keep your mouth closed. Because see, we, let me, let me help us out. We, a lot of times, give the enemy the key to fight us with. He ain't got to go and study a whole lot of time. We said, girl, you know, so and so and so and so and so and so and so. And we put it in the atmosphere. And that's a whole nother teaching. We put it in the atmosphere, and there are spirits monitoring, there you go, that's it, that are listening, and they take it back to see how to come back and fight us. That's a whole nother teaching. That's a whole real, that's a real teaching. So sometimes you got to close your mouth as to what you're doing, uh, and let me help us out, help y'all out, because keep it off of Facebook, keep it off of Instagram, Snapchat, chat, whatever else. Stay out of clubhouse, quit telling all your business. You giving the enemy the tool to fight you with, and then you wonder why nobody won't support your business, because you, because somebody went back and talked about you. Distractions, focus killers. Take your eyes off of the distractions. Don't allow the, dis the distractions to get you off focus to what God has called you to do. And when you get in a tough place, don't be distracted by the tough place. Get your eyes on the Lord. Don't look at the problem. Look at the promise. What did God say? What did he tell you? Oh, good. I'm, I'm right where I want to be. What did he tell you? That's what we're focusing on. And in this season, that's how we're going to make it. Is I keep my eyes straight in front of me. Keep my eyes on the promise. And when the distractions want to rise up, you got to put the word on it. You got to apply the word to what he's saying. To your mind, to yourself, so that you stay focused on what the Lord is saying to you. So let us look to the Lord. Come on, rest to your feet. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm finished. And I'm not even going to give an altar call because we all are dealing with distractions. We're all dealing with something that comes to get our focus off of and the call of God and the work that his, God has assigned to our hands. So, Father, I pray that, God, as we, your sons and daughters, are standing before you, God, you see the, the, the distractions that the enemy has sent to get us off focus and to, to get us into a place that we are not focused on you and your word. We're not focused on praying. We're not focused on fasting. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would dispatch angels that will push back the forces, warfaring angels that will push back the forces of the enemy. That every distraction that has risen itself up against us, that it be brought down and silenced in the name of Jesus. That God, as we walk this journey with you, that Lord, we will keep our eyes focused straight ahead that we won't look to the left nor the right we'll take our feet from off of that pathway of getting off course with you but that god we will set our feet in the path in the direction that you have ordained for us god i thank you that the word that we have within us god i speak to that word and i call it to continuously rise up in us in the name of jesus that when we would veer to the left or the right, that the word will scoop us back 
in right standing and in our right position with you. God, somebody feels like at the end of their rope on today, feel like they don't know what they're going to do. But God, I speak life to them in the name of Jesus. I speak clarity of direction to them, God, that they will be able to see clearly on today what it is that they need to do. God, I speak strength to them that they will stand against the attacks of the enemy. Oh God, that they will not buckle under the, the press, oppression and the force that the enemy is putting on them, but that God, they will stand, hallelujah, in victory that you have given unto them. God, that we will fight the good fight of faith and that we will push forward. We will press toward the mark for the prize, for the high calling in you, that we'll keep our eyes lifted straight before us and that we will always look to the hills from which cometh our help. And that word that's in us, God, I speak to the word of God that lies within us and I call it up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call the word of God that the enemy has taken our attention off of. I call it up and alive that it will well up in us like a well of water springing up into life everlasting. And God, we thank you on today for all that you're doing. God, we pray for those that are hurting God, by way of loss of family and loved ones, we pray for them on today, God, that you will be strength to them. Let them know, God, that you have not, you have not made a mistake and that you have not left them, oh God. But oh God, be strength for them. Build them up, oh God. God, be peace that passes all understanding for them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, even those that are sick in their bodies, we release healing, oh Father. The balm of Gilead, the healing virtue in your power, God, to infuse their bodies from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. God, we speak victory in the name of Jesus. We speak to lungs, oh God, that lungs will open up and they will be able to breathe, oh God, as necessary and as they should, oh God. We speak to the heart, God, that the heart will beat in normal rhythm, oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, God, that blood pressures are being, hallelujah, leveled out, oh God. They're being brought down to a a correct position and place, oh Father, that the stress on the heart, God, is relieving the blood pressure in the body, oh God. We thank you for your hand of healing being upon your people. God, I thank you for peace of mind. Oh, calm the raging conversation in their minds. We speak peace, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, peace, oh God, peace, oh God, whoo, Jesus, oh, na, 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 ma, sho, la, 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 ba, e, na, 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 ma, shi, ko, la, la, ba, ya, whoo, peace, God, peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, to those families, that husband that has lost his wife, to those children who lost their mother. Ah, oh God, we speak peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. To that daughter who has lost her mother, we speak peace, God, in the name of Jesus. To that wife who's lost a husband, we speak peace, God, in the name of Jesus. To that mother who's lost a child, we speak peace, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. And, oh, God, we praise you that you have given us power and authority over the distractions that come to kill our focus. And we thank you, God, that we have focus 